Welcome to Sabino Canyon. My name is Glenn, and today I will be your guide. After that big flood in July 2006, many of the canyon's facilities, including the road itself, were damaged or destroyed. Flash floods are something that native Tucsonans hear a great deal about. In fact, flooding is quite common during the seasonal rains here in the southwest. The countryside is littered with dry creek beds and washes that come to life quickly, blow briefly, then disappear again, whoosh, like a mirage. Some of these dry stream beds can actually contain staggering amounts of water. Sabino Creek is one of those surprisingly large streams. Sabino Creek is fed only by rainwater, and it is commonly described as an ephemeral stream. Deer and other animals come from miles around for whatever water is here. Here at Stop 1, you see before you Rattlesnake Creek Bridge. So much water flooded this tiny wash that it swept away all the dirt and even 20-odd feet of roadway in less than 12 hours. This creek didn't overrun its banks. It swept them away. Mostly, Sabino Creek is fairly dry, puddles of open water here and there. It is hard to imagine what a big flood in the canyon looks like until it happens. It is not hard to imagine Sabino Canyon thousands of years ago. Archaeologists tell us that the Tucson Valley has been inhabited for at least 4,000 years. After the Civil War, people from nearby Fort Lowell and Tucson began to use the Sabino Canyon area as a retreat from the desert heat. It was hard to travel anywhere then, but they came over 17 miles of rut-filled roads to picnic in this place, friends and family spending time together. The bone-shattering trip was well worth it. Today's visitors don't come in covered wagons, and we have air conditioning at home. We are still attracted to the canyon, coming with our friends and families. Today's guests have nicer restrooms, and even picnic tables and trash cans. Look at this garbage can. Even though it was bolted to concrete up by the bathroom above the bridge, the flooding was so strong that it was swept downstream more than 30 feet. The road has been washed away many times in the past. Even the bridges left by the WPA workers who originally built the road have been refurbished from time to time. The shattered remains of cement picnic tables litter the stream. Not all of them were destroyed in 2006. In 2006, the rains were very heavy, and the mountain was very vulnerable to erosion. The road we are traveling on took it head on. Perhaps a little background is in order. There was a fire, a big fire, across most of the Catalina Mountains back in 2003. It was terrible. 
The visitor center area was home to many firefighters as they tried to control the blaze. After the fire had burnt out, the experts correctly warned that the denuded areas in the Catalinas would be more susceptible to erosion from rainfall. The forest canopy and plant life that was destroyed protected the soil on the steep mountain sides. Without it, those slopes would wash away when it rained. When the rain came after the fire, it did just that. The burnt trees and ash of the Aspen fire flowed down through the canyon. It was visible as a black line wherever the high water mark of the creek was. Debris from the mountain choked the lower canyon and blocked the road. Look at this tree on the left of the shuttle. It is not a little tree. In fact, it's a Goodings willow, and it is the largest type of willow tree found in Arizona. The specimen that the shuttle passed crossing the bridge back there was around 20 feet tall. Look at that same bridge in August of 2006. That large tree is just playing God. The road here was extensively damaged in the flooding. The bridges are old. They have stood the test of time. The road is more ephemeral, like the stream itself. It disappears from time to time. In Sabino Canyon, we almost got a big dam because of the Great Depression. These old bridges were never meant to last 70 years. The New Deal is Roosevelt's plan for the Great Depression. The workers of the WPA and the CCC would have been told that Tucsonans were getting a canyon lake up in the Catalina Mountains. They would have built a bigger road if that had happened. Our little road is a contractor's road for the dam builders. Fortunately for us, the government abandoned the project and left the road and the dam unfinished. Whatever was originally intended, the road became part of the Tucson community. The Oasis Park was an afterthought when the government cut the budget for the dam.
local residents used the road for picnicking. The road was open for anybody with a car brave enough to head up into the canyon. Over the years, this road became a popular spot. The 50s and 60s saw many family outings and vast herds of young lovers here in the canyon. You never know what is watching you as you pass by. Rock slides can happen anywhere in the canyon when it rains. The Aspen fire has certainly added to the pile of debris choking the canyon floor. It is not the only cause, though. This hillside was undamaged by the fire. Above this retaining wall, the Forest Service installed an erosion barrier made out of wire. It is almost invisible, and it seems to have worked. The main barrier to the road being used again is up ahead of us, just past stop 7. Here at shuttle stop 7, the saguaros are scattered like the casualties of the great disaster that they are. They were swept off the canyon walls and left down here by the side of the stream. The shuttle stop bench survived the flood unharmed somehow. Forest Service singled this area out as a weak spot in the road years ago. They replaced the asphalt with large cement slabs to prevent erosion. The slabs were not eroded by the water at all. The ground all around these slabs of concrete, though, it was not so resistant to the pull of the stream.
Just above us now is the historic Soldier Trail. It was restored just before the flood. I didn't have time to see what was left of it, though. Many large trees were swept away here by Bridge Nine. When I first got here to stop eight, I could barely recognize this place. Even the animals must have a lot of cleaning to do. Driving the shuttle up this last little stretch of road was so much fun. It really completed the tour through the canyon for me, because here at the beginning of the upper canyon, it takes you up along the canyon wall and lets you look down at the trees. It also connected the shuttle to the rest of the mountain via the staircase at shuttle stop 9. I want to share this place with as many people as possible because it is so much a part of who I am as a Tucsonan. It is also perfectly suited to be an educational resource here in our community. Sabino Canyon is the perfect backdrop to learn about conservation and about history here in the Southwest.
flooding has completely destroyed the turnaround here at stop nine. A pile of rocks taller than a man covers the area. You can also see that the edge of the road is not what it used to be. Hundreds of thousands of people have stood on this spot contemplating the desert since these railings were installed. Visitors from all over the world. This is where the restroom was. This is the recently added drainage pipe the Forest Service installed to help control runoff. If the rock slides hadn't buried the whole area, the shuttle would still be able to turn around here. It would be wonderful to fix this place so that future generations could ride the shuttle to this spot on the road to nowhere. This park is a wild place. Please remember that many rare animals call Sabino Canyon home. The charm of a wilderness park is that nature lives here after all. Some of the animals you may encounter could be quite dangerous. Lions and other small cats are just the largest of these. Visitors are far more likely to encounter javelina or poisonous snakes. Danger lurks down around your ankles. Even the cactus have thorns. When most people think of the desert around Tucson, Certain words typically describe the wilderness. Dry, dusty, hot. Sabino Canyon shows us that the desert is also sometimes hospitable, lush, and even flooded. Words not often used to describe the desert. The canyon has survived fire and flooding. Each of these forces has had some effect on the plants, animals, and people that call the canyon home. I hope you have enjoyed your ride with me on this, the road to nowhere. <laughs>